It is the Bobo Show. <sighs> Past couple weeks have been rough on the Todd, Todd, Todd part of the intro there. Uh, as we've lost Todd Blackledge, he's still alive. He's just yeah, he's moving still to alive. a different TV network. And then we, we lost Todd Munkin. What's up, Jake Roos? Oh, man. Listen, sometimes I know I'm late to the, the Wednesday show. I was not going to be late to the Mike Bobo Wednesday show. <laughs> <laughs> the Mike Bobo Show. <laughs> Uh, let's jump right into it, guys. Jake Rowe and I and Palmer had a little bit of an emergency get together yesterday. We talked about this, um, but we've slept on it now. Let's hear what y'all think about what Todd Munkin left behind and what Mike Bobo will make of it. No way of knowing whether it's going to pan out or not. Uh, just trying to Trying to add context, I think, to what Mike Bobo did at Georgia when he was there before. And, uh, you know, been just looking through a lot of numbers, um, talking to a lot of people. Uh, you know, spoke with several former players yesterday who, you know, not on the record, but, but you know, a couple who just, like, saw my tweets and called me up and was like, hey, dude, I mean, really excited Mike Bobo's back. Um, I think he's going to be awesome. Um he was he was one of the you know and and I brought this up on the show yesterday and Roos we've talked about this I believe on this show we were standing together when when we found out that Mike Bobo got hired to be the head coach at Colorado State and we looked at each other and we said I feel like something bad just happened to Georgia and boy we we nailed that one we may not have got anything right since then but we got that one right well why did y'all feel that way. It just – because he was running the program, man. I mean, I, listen, I've got all the respect and admiration for Mark Rick that I could possibly have. Um, I think he's a phenomenal man, and I think that if his wife and he and his dad and, and you know, every, and, and Dave Van Hallinger, his best friend and strength and conditioning coach, um, if those – if there wasn't so many medical issues there and those guys having to fight battles there, um, you know, I think he would have probably been able to sustain a little longer than he did. Um, but he, he wasn't, and, and I think he kind of burned out a little bit there at the, the end of his time at Georgia. And uh, I think Mike Bobo probably for that last at least three years and maybe five, he ran the program. I mean, he he wasn't the face of the program, but you know, inside out, um, you know, just the administrative part of it. I mean, he was one third head. He was one third head coach, one third offensive coordinator, one third recruiting coordinator. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I think he wore a lot of hats at Georgia. And that's not making an excuse for, you know, in, for struggling in games here and there. Uh, that happens. You know, Todd Monk has struggled against Missouri. Todd Monk has struggled against Kentucky a little bit. So let's not, let's not you know, I, I don't want to put it all on him, uh, all on the, the you know, the, uh, the other stuff he had going on. But he wore a lot of hats at Georgia. Um, and, you know, we'll get into the stats later on or, or you know, we get to them now, I guess. 17 games in three years, Georgia allowed 30-plus points. And uh, Mike Bobo and company went 9-8 and eight against those – in those games uh, with some big wins and some losses that were heartbreaking. The prayer at Jordan Hare is in there. Um, you know, Georgia has allowed uh, over the past three years you – know, that was a three-year span – over the past three yeah. years, Georgia's had three ga- uh, five games where they've allowed 30-plus points. Well, I think there's a valid concern there that you can't compare what happened then to what he'll work with now for good reasons and you know for bad reasons. He had some bad stops in between, and uh, the critics of the hire are certainly pointing those out. I think that part of this equation, though, is how good Todd Munkin was at his job. Uh, Palmer, wh- what do you expect – will be the toughest challenge for Georgia to either replicate or fill in the gap uh, with what Todd Munkin did for this offense. Anything at a specific position, the the way he schemed things up, how is this Munkin loss going to hurt? You know, to me, I think it's, it's just figuring out the, the passing game and, and the, the ingenuity of it. Um, you know, I, I think what we've seen and I've, I've seen this sentiment from several people you know, the, talking about the, the transition here is that Georgia has a system now, Georgia. It's not the Mike Bobo way. It is the Georgia way. And that wasn't the case until Todd Munkin. And we haven't seen another offensive coordinator since Todd Munkin, Georgia, is a completely different offensive identity 
uh, the last three years than they, than they have been prior to him. And so I'm very curious to see how Mike Bobo can take the concepts of what Georgia did so well these last three years and, and specifically this past year with him on the staff, Bobo being there to, to watch uh, Munkin and his ways. Um, very curious to see how he takes that and, and, and applies it to his own, you know, his, his own ways of an offensive identity. Um, you know, a, a, again, Georgia has not had the guys to, to, to hand the ball off to a tight end before they've got that now. Um, you know, that how do you continue to do that without, um, you know, it, it, under a new identity with, with a new coordinator? Yeah. How do you continue to do that is, is what I'm really interested to see. And, and I, I think I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, well, it is, it, it's the Georgia way. I don't know that. And, and I don't think that anybody can. Well, there's know a that. lot of coaches that are from Georgia. So it seems like the Georgia way. I mean, they're all dogs, Palmer. It's, it's all dogs all the time. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is, Kill why it, is there the why is there the the confidence that, that, that George is going to continue to run what Todd Munkin ran? How, um, how, probably because it worked. I would assume that because it worked so well. Well, they've all been in that foxhole together for a whole year. You know, like it. I mean, listen. I mean, I can't guarantee it, but I can guarantee you this. I can guarantee you there are some full-blown idiots <laughs> if it doesn't get done, done that way. Oh, because, uh, no, yeah, I, I completely they, they've been agree immersed. They've been uh, immersed together for over a year in the same system, and they've all been using the same terminology, and those players have heard that terminology come out of Mike Bobo's mouth. And they've, I mean, listen, he'll add to it. He added to it when he came. He's There's a reason when, when Todd Munkin was on his way out the door, he was like, you better hire Mike Bobo. He's he's big time, you know. They facts yeah, over gonna, feelings. Facts yeah, over he's feelings. It's gonna have to make that inevitably things will change because Stetson Bennett's not under center anymore. The things yeah, right. Bennett things are, gonna change. are not really replicable in a lot of the guys that you have on campus right now. I don't know that anybody's as quick as Stetson or as quick to run as Stetson. So Jake, your uh, your audio is sounding a little murky. I don't know if you're if, yeah, if there's Frank anything you can here. adjust there. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, I, somebody's I, holding him underwater. Yeah, he's <laughs> he is under the lake. Um, no, I, I think saying that this is just going to be a, an entirely new system uh, is probably extreme. I don't, I don't think Mike Bobo's coming in to run the Veer or the triple option or anything like that. Or you know, the I formation, as is everyone is assuming. Yeah, that's better. much better. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, I was running um, off of my internal mic. I, I'm not sure that the fullback's even going to come back. I wish it would. I think I want to awesome. see I, somebody posted uh, seeing Brock Bowers at the fullback position. Yeah. I want it. I want it so bad. Put Brock I Bowers in like a number 48 jersey. Here's what, and here's what cracks me up about that. About that, you're gonna have you're gonna have hyper anti Bobo folks that Brock Bowers is probably gonna line up in an offset eye or something at fullback at some point, and they're gonna they're gonna go bananas. <laughs> Right, they're going to go bananas, but they didn't go bananas when Brock Bowers was left in to pass protect on third and long when Todd Munkin was. A good, and, you know, I've found myself kind of having to say, like, you know, in, in discussions like, man, I think I think my, I think Todd Munkin was fantastic. OK, but Mike Bobo gets raked over the coals for his quarterback decisions. And Todd Munkin tried to run Stetson Bennett off. He started Dewan Mathis. OK, so sometimes the mistakes you make don't come home to roost like others do. And Stetson Bennett being hard-headed saved Georgia's ass. It just did. I mean, it it, it saved Georgia um, from having to deal with a with from having to play Dwan Mathis more than it had to because Dwan Mathis wasn't a really good quarterback. It saved Georgia from having to um, you know maybe play Carson Beck last year before he was ready. And um, I, I just don't know. I don't understand how you could kind of look back at at Mike Bobo and the time he spent at Georgia, especially those last three or four years, and say, you know what, that's who he is, and this this is not a better situation. It is an yeah. astronomically better situation. Seventeen times, thirty plus thirty plus points scored on Georgia with Mike well, Bobo. I mean, as Jay, offensive Jay, coordinator. I'll bring this up because, and and this is something I was going to ask y'all anyway. I was. I was 
eight years old when when Mike Bobo took over as the Georgia offensive coordinator. Man, I was. I wish. I wish you had sent. I wish. I knew you were going to make that point because I would have asked you for a photo of eight-year-old Palmer to put in the show. Go ahead. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll look back and I'll look back and. It's all, it's all right. It's all right. Just focus uh, on. I was on 15 when Mike Bobo left Georgia. I don't remember watching. It. I did not watch a ton of Georgia football. What are the games that I need to go watch to understand the good, oh, okay. the bad, That's and the good. ugly? With with. Mike Bobo offense, South and, Carolina, Carolina, and Auburn list. and South Carolina stuff. <laughs> yeah, we don't we big. don't know, you know, because he spent the past year with Georgia's personnel. And I mean, the thing about it is, is I think if you go back and you watch it every year, right? You started 2007 because that's his first. 2007 is going to be a little different in 2008 than 2009 and 2010. Um, there's all this criticism about no motion. It was like 80 percent when he was at Auburn, which was his last stop. Um, it's, you know, there's, you know, folks were all oh, the recruiting. Well, Roos and I were talking about it today. All right. Let's talk about the, the okay. You, you know who Kirby, you know who Kirby Smart didn't like recruiting against when he was in Alabama? Mike Bobo. Because uh, Kirby Smart thought he had uh, Malcolm Mitchell and Jay Rome. And uh, he, he didn't because Georgia had him. Um, you know, when, when Mike Bobo left, Georgia lost any chance of keeping Van Jefferson or, or, or Darius Slay, Slayton. Both of those guys are in the NFL right now playing with playing. And Roos and I were talking about that the other day. Well, Darius Slayton, stud. So, I mean, there's all this talk of like, well, Bobo had, and, and I see Matt, our man Matthew C over here in the comments talking about how Bobo had played a hand in that, in that talent acquisition. Yeah, he did for sure. So did Brian McClendon. Brian McClendon's on staff. So did Stacey Searles. Stacey Searles is on staff. All those guys are recruiting real well because Georgia's a different machine now. And, uh, you know, it's – I honestly believe with with everything I got that Georgia's culture and what Georgia has going on, the talent, guys like Brock Bowers that give you the scheme first versatility they do and a stud offensive line, they elevate offensive coordinators. Todd Munkin got elevated at Georgia. He didn't win anything before he got to Georgia. He was a good coordinator. They scored some points in the Big 12, and the same folks here will make fun of the Big 12 for not scoring for, for not being able to play any defense. Big 12 is pretty bad defense. Yeah, it, it was then. It really was. I mean, he was averaging almost 50 a game in the Big 12. <laughs> with a with a with a quarterback older than Stetson Bennett. Yeah, we <laughs> was, was ancient, dude. Stetson he Bennett. was he was mm. dusty. Right. Now, yeah, he was like 29 or something when he got in the NFL. So I yeah. haven't I, I haven't heard anybody say this yet. And but I'm interested in how you guys feel about it. I, I'm, I'm I'm personally excited to see what Mike Bobo can do with this talent. I really am. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I think that it's it's not something he's ever had in his career. It's a totally different thing. Now I'm, listen, I'm not saying the guy's the end all be all. He's I, the guy's not Bill Walsh. I mean, but <laughs> I, I mean at the same time. He, he did it with some lesser talent. He put together some really competent offenses with much lesser talent than this. I don't know what this opens up for Mike Bobo. Bill Shanks and I were talking about this on the radio the other day. The idea to me of what he's coming back to, right? Do I think wide receivers better? Yes. Do I think tight ends better? Yes. To me, the deeper. big difference. To me, like the difference better is, and deeper. Yeah. To me, the yeah. big difference is the offensive line. And what does that change? What does that allow Mike Bobo's system to do when the offensive line is so significantly better. I don't, we don't know that answer because that's never been the case. Right. So I've got to say, I'm willing to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. He coached some exciting ones. And I, you know, listen, I was, I was in those stands screaming at him too at one point, but I don't think that this, it was ever what he had then. And he, and he put together some pretty damn good offenses back then. Oh Yeah. I never yelled at Bobo for the record. I only yelled for him, just cheered for him <laughs> all the time. But if you uh, take like let, let's say you take like his last three years at Georgia, like which I felt was probably his his best three years, and I think probably the most relevant three years. Best um, in Georgia history, one of them. Right. Let's say you throw two and a half, three points a game on those years. Okay. Let's say, let's say that he's able to improve upon it that much. Um Guys, that's the best three-year stretch of offense Georgia's ever played, Todd Munkin included. Um, and it helps. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. It absolutely helps when you don't have 17 freaking games where you've got to score 30 points to win. Because I'll tell you this right now, 
Um, you know, Georgia, Georgia's allowed seven, uh, 30 points um, five times over the past three years, and one of those was the SEC championship game when they had LSU beat to death. Um, that game was 50, 50 to 23 before it came, became 50 to 30. Um, that's a lot of stress to put on a football team. It happened six out of the first seven games in 2013. And, you know, what happens? South Carolina year. comes to town. South Carolina comes to town with Jadavion Clowney and all those studs. Georgia hangs 44 or something like that on them. LSU comes to town. And I'm not saying that Bobo should be absolved of some of the bad games they had. I'm not. I mean, there, there were roster things and, and stuff like that. But, listen, it's, it really does funnel back to the head man at the top. And, you know, Kirby Smart, he's not perfect. Neither are all these people that are pointing out how coaches can be wrong, okay? You see you see dudes like, well, coaches can be wrong. You can too, brother. You can too. I swear to God. Yeah. So, uh, no I coaches are like bad Donnie Baker. Uh, I swear to God. But, yeah, it's you – know, I'm, not, I'm not trying to – I really am not trying to, like, get on anybody's case here. I'm just trying to get the point across that – Listen, it's just a different it's a different thing and you got a guy who did a really good job and was even elite at some at, at different points. But the one thing that Kirby Smart has brought to the Georgia program maybe more than anything else is consistency. And I think that that what that Mike Bobo's ceiling as a coordinator if it can be reached, I think it can be consistently uh, executed in a Kirby Smart uh what? regime. You, you talk about the ceiling. What do you think the floor for Mike Bobo in a Kirby Smart scheme is as a Georgia OC? I, I don't. I think it's a lot better than James Coley. Yeah, really. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. necessarily think that. I'm not going to say it, but I, I don't necessarily believe today that uh, Bobo will improve Georgia's offense over what Munkin did from last year to this year. He could. I don't think you will either. Uh, but it, it probably doesn't matter. Um, and, if, guys, if there's ever a year for there to be a little bit of a adjustment period on offense, just take a look at Georgia's 2023 schedule. I promise it's going to be okay. And by the time this – title postseason run culminates in December, wherever Georgia is, I believe Mike Bobo will be uh, humming with this Georgia offense and all the talent that he's got. That's just what my my gut tells me. It's going to be hard to mess it up. Another thing I do want to point out here about Bobo is if you look at his multi-year starters at quarterback, he had three of them. He had three – he had uh, two four-year starters and one three-year starter, and every single time they got better every year. Every single time they developed and they developed and they got better every year. And Aaron Murray was carrying Georgia on his back in 2013. 